talk about these structural changes and what's going on and people not being able to really explain this. I'm sure Jim and I talked about this before and and, and maybe you as well, Bob, but how do you see the demographic factor play into all of this? Because my suspicion is that that might have a very pivotal role in one not being that easy to explain because we haven't really seen the demographic shifts before, uh, at least not for a long time. And actually, this this will take a long time to play out, even though a lot of people have talked about it coming. You know, I can't remember when Harry Dent became started talking about demographics, but it's a long time and nothing happened. Maybe it's happening now, but at such a slow pace that we can't, we don't really know how to measure it and model it and so on and so forth. I'd love to hear your thoughts about that, both of you. Well, I think the the demographic story, um, you know, at a big picture level, we're pulling uh, workers out of the economy, productive capacity, essentially out of the economy. And those workers are continuing to spend to some extent, right? You know, their production value is zero once they retire and their spending uh, on houses and goods and services is, is certainly not zero. Um, and so, you know, if you were just to look at that on the surface, you'd say, hey, look, that looks like an inflationary, on the margin inflationary pressure, primarily through the fact that it would likely, that demand would likely continue to keep in, uh, labor markets relatively tight, uh, given that demand continues and labor supply is more moderated. I, I think um, people get confused because they look at Japan and they say Japan had terrible demographics for an extended period of time. And therefore, it must be a deflationary force in the economy. And I think they confuse the fact that you have to think about uh, the demographic environment in the context of the monetary policy environment. So the reason why Japan had a big deflationary environment is because their monetary policy was way too tight for 20 years, 30 years even. So there's a question about whether it's too tight even today on a uh, secular basis. And so the effective outcome will be a function of the inflationary dynamic that comes from uh, labor losses relative to the monetary policy and the accepted acceptable amount of nominal demand that the Fed implements. And so what if the Fed is basically says, hey, look, we're going to have the same amount of nominal demand. I think this is basically what's happening right now. Fed's like, we want good nominal demand, five to six percent nominal demand growth. But the labor force, you know, goes from expanding at one and one and a, one or one and a half percent a year the way it was before, you know, back in the 90s to zero to negative. Well, you know, very simply, you can't have those two things work out. You can't have the same rate of nominal demand growth and, you know, uh, significantly less people uh, unless you have you know, incredible productivity boom, which is possible, you know, certainly that's a possible option or higher prices. Like that's, that's just the way it works out. Or you have to get labor supply, you know, from somewhere else, which, you know, we've gotten a little bit of that and it's kind of offset excess retirements. And so it hasn't been as acute as it would have been otherwise, but like that's, that's how those figures have to work out. And so it's really the, that interplay between the demographics and the fed that will determine whether it's inflationary or deflationary ahead. 